my daughter just texted me today to let me know that of the many firsts of the Biden White House, they're going to have the first shelter dog in the White House. Now this is important for her because she works with an animal rescue in Denver. Everybody thinks the caffeinated Bible means coffee, but tea will do as well. And in fact, it changes our perspective just a little bit. So I thought I'd switch things up a little bit today, give you a slightly different perspective. I just finished reviewing this book by Holly Morris, Encountering Eve's Afterlife. What she does is she takes three very different trajectories on the interpretation of the story of Eve and shows how they complement or they contradict each other. In particular, she looks at the traditional reading of how Eve introduced sin into the world or was the first person to be tempted. Then she looks at this whole idea of knowledge, how knowledge and wisdom plays such an important role in the Genesis 2 and 3 stories. And then finally she takes the trajectory where it looks at Eve being the mother of all life or the mother of all human beings and how that plays out, especially in the two instances where Paul cites from Eve's story. Now she clearly states that the goal of her work is to break open the traditional readings of Eve's story and show how there's a lot more room and diversity of thought within this narrative from Genesis 2 and 3 than oftentimes we consider. I don't agree with everything she says, but I learned a great deal from her work. And this brings me to what I wanna talk about today. How do you go about researching or becoming informed on a particular subject matter? Now, when I teach seminary courses, oftentimes what I tell my students is when they are researching a paper, don't just look at commentators or scholars that come from your particular denomination, tradition, or theological bent. In other words, if you're conservative, just don't look at conservative theologians. And if you're liberal, just don't look at the liberal ones. You want to look at a range of scholars. Liberal, conservative, you also want to look at a range over time. Go back to the church fathers, the medieval, the reformers, up to the modern. And you also want to look around the world. The United States only makes up about 6% of the world's population, but we are less than about 3% of the world's Christian population. And so you want to know what the rest, that other 97% of the church, is thinking about these issues. I have to try a piece of my wife's cake here. Mmm. That's good. One of the 20th century's great thinkers, a guy named Ludwig Wittgenstein, wrote about how do you understand a philosophical issue? And he said, the problem is, is that a picture holds us captive. And what does he mean by that? He says, we have a pi picture of what a truth or a concept is all about. And then the problem is it has a frame around it. And all that we do is we just keep tracing around the frame, staying within that picture, and we say, this is what the truth is. Wittgenstein says, what we need instead are other pictures. We just don't want to stick with one. We want to look at other pictures. And as we look at other pictures, we get a bigger picture of what the whole thing is about. So consider these images of Pike's Peak that I've taken over the years from within Garden of the Gods, from on various mountain ridges, bicycling, hiking, climbing, various different pr perspectives on Pike's Peak. And all those different perspectives show us something different about this mountain from within the city or from within Garden of the Gods. By building up a gallery of pictures of what Pikes Peak looks like, you can very easily say that this is not Pikes Peak because you've seen enough pictures of it that you realize that that is not what it is. So looking at multiple viewpoints and different perspectives not only will expand your perspective, 
It'll give you a better grasp on what the truth or this concept is all about. And it'll take your understanding of that subject matter a lot deeper and more profoundly, just like Holly Morris's book did on Eve's story. Now, this is important not just for interpreting the Bible or theological concepts, but it's important for everyday life as well. Take, for example, COVID or the recent election. If 99.9% .9 of all the sources say that the coronavirus is completely out of control in the United States, but you have one source that is saying, no, we've got it under control and we're rounding the bend, you should realize immediately that one of those pictures is completely wrong. The same thing with the election. When all the foreign sources and U.S. sources are talking about who won the election and how they won it, and then you have one source saying that they didn't, then you need to step back and realize that, well, maybe something is wrong here. When you see six out of seven dentists recommending something, you need to take note and say, I think they've probably got a pretty good handle on it. I should take their advice. Now, the corollary to this is that if you're getting all your information about current news, let's say the coronavirus or the election, from one source or one particular slant on the news, then you're not being informed. You're being indoctrinated. The same thing when it comes to the Bible. If you just read one particular strand of thought, let's say you pick up and you just read conservative Anglo-Catholics on a particular text, well, you're not realizing the history of the church or the breadth of the church or with what other interpreters who you may not agree with very much have to say about the picture. The problem is, is that a picture can hold us captive and what we need are more pictures. And especially considering these issues like coronavirus or the election from an international perspective, if you look at what the Canadian Broadcasting Company said, or, or the BBC, or the German Deutsche Welle, what these different international news surfaces have and their perspective on it, if you're not looking at it, it's an incredible shame. Especially because we're living at a point in time in history where we have such easy and quick access to those sources. We should be taking advantage of them rather than squandering this moment. Seeing things in different perspectives help you realize that maybe what you held as sacrosanct and so important may not actually be the case. It might force you to either widen your view, expand it, or correct it. For example, drinking tea instead of coffee might do you some good every now and then. Seeing different perspectives will help you not only have the bigger picture, it will expand your view, perhaps even correct or challenge your view if it needs to be challenged or corrected. Hopefully it will help you to better understand the Bible or these various news topics, and also realize that people who have different views from you are not crazy or stupid. They have a different perspective and a different take, and learning to see it their way is a very important aspect of what it means to be a human. Just like drinking tea every now and then can broaden your horizons and make you a better person. What? 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 I think we are getting the time out for this video, so I will catch you next week. Until then, it's time to feed the beast. Huh? You want dinner? Let's go.